<coughs> okay, this is Google Earth, and it's the age of the lithos lithosphere for Google Earth. And uh, I'll just move around to North America. We have North America here, and we have, uh, as per this scale here, oldest continental crust here shown in dark blue through to light blue showing indicating the youngest continental crust likewise on this rainbow colored area we have oceanic crust with red indicating the youngest oceanic crust through to the oldest which is uh, violet indicating the oldest oceanic crust up against the boundaries of the continental crust and that correlates to this scale here with red youngest purple oldest violet the oldest so what you'll notice is there's a continuous red line and if we follow that red line through the Atlantic Ocean between Africa and the Americas down to Antarctica there's an is a mid oceanic ridge line as it is known encircling uh, Antarctica so the the Atlantic um, oceanic mid oceanic ridge line comes down to here and then we can follow uh, it up through to uh, India here there's India there there's Madagascar, this is Africa, and if we go back to Antarctica, uh, so we have that expansion joint, that expansion joint, and uh, the expansion joint that comes around Antarctica uh, splits off here, and that forms the Pacific. I'll just bring north around. So this is the Pacific Ocean and this is the uh, mid oceanic ridge line in the Pacific so this ridge line uh, indicated by the red areas is where new oceanic crust is formed so new oceanic crust is formed at these red lines and it adds to the surface area of the earth as it increases the surface area of the earth it increases the radius of the earth these red lines are an expansion joint for the earth it is like a seam running around a baseball uh, obviously the baseball seam wouldn't look as haphazard as that but that is what it is so I'll just bring north around again you can see that this boundary here of Africa See, that's Africa. That boundary there meets up with this boundary here. And this boundary here meets up with this boundary here. So if this boundary meets up with that boundary, and that boundary meets up with that boundary, then this boundary meets up with this boundary. So Africa used to join with North America. Similarly, uh, this part, the uh, west coast of Africa, used to join up with the east coast of the Americas. Just as this boundary has a halfway boundary here, meets up here, so does this boundary meet up with that boundary. So if that boundary meets up with that boundary, and that boundary meets up with that boundary, then this boundary meets up with that boundary. And you'll find that right throughout the... Um, this band of red uh, let's let's have a look for example at Australia and Antarctica I'll just bring north around all right there we have Australia there and I just um, just take note I'll just bring Australia into view take note that uh, we don't really see a distinguishing distinguishing shoreline between uh, Papua New Guinea and Australia uh, that's because we've got submerged continental crust in between. Likewise, Tasmania uh, looks like it's part of the mainland, which it is, because it's uh, in between 
uh, you have, where, you, where you have Bass Strait, you have submerged continental crust. So uh, my understanding is these other blue areas is uh, obviously not oceanic crust, but it's continental crust that hasn't been dated. Okay. So you can see that this boundary here would meet up with this boundary here. And this boundary here of Antarctica would meet up with this boundary here. So if this boundary meets up with that boundary, and that boundary meets up with that boundary, then this boundary on, on Antarctica meets up with this boundary here on Australia. Uh, let's, let's have a look at Madagascar. So we're north around. And you can see that Madagascar used to, uh, you know, if this this boundary here meets up with this um, mid, well, it's not a mid oceanic ridge line, but you can see that that's young oceanic crust, comparatively speaking, to the surrounding oceanic crust. So this boundary meets with that boundary, and that boundary meets with that boundary. If that boundary meets with that boundary, and that boundary meets with that boundary, then that boundary will meet with that boundary. So Madagascar used to go into that part there of Africa. Okay, where else can we look? Let's look at Greenland. Okay, so we'll just bring north around. So this area here is Greenland. So we can see that this boundary here used to meet up with uh, that boundary there of oceanic crust. And this boundary here used to meet up with that boundary there of oceanic crust. So likewise, if that boundary meets with that boundary, and that boundary meets with that boundary, then that boundary must meet with that boundary. And that works right across the whole globe. So if you remove the oceanic crust, and you reduce the radius of the Earth accordingly, as the oceanic crust retreats back into the mid-oceanic ridge lines where it was formed, the surface area of the Earth is reduced, and the radius of the Earth is reduced the corresponding amount. And that is the world over. The boundaries of the continental crust form a complete interlocking shell at 52% of the Earth's current radius. Okay, so uh, you can check out James Maxlow's uh, website and you can um, if you do a search find for 52 percent you'll be able to locate this information uh, actually I'll put a link in the in the description box below about it all right so the question is we know well before I go into the question we know that the earth is expanding for those boundaries to meet together such as such as I have de now described the um, you know, the Earth must have expanded. The question is why? How? How did the Earth expand? Why did the Earth expand? Um, we know that it's working against gravity. We know that um, in terms of potential energy, it's breaking the laws of physics. So it can't possibly, mathematically speaking, and physically speaking, it can't be doing it. But <clears throat> according to the geometric evidence, such as the boundaries meeting together, such as they do, it's obvious that the Earth has expanded. So I would put it to you that the reason that the Earth has expanded is because of some major geological event in Earth's history. According to the Bible, in 23... 49 BC, according to Bishop Usher's timeline of the Bible, that is when the global flood took place. A hundred years after that, a man called Peleg was born, and he was so named because in his days the earth was divided. You can check that out for yourself in Genesis chapter 10, verse 25. So in his days the earth was divided, and his name and his derivative names have geological and geographical meanings such as earthquake, divide, split, stream, canal, river. <clears throat> okay, so 
It's describing the ever widening in the Atlantic, I believe. If 100 metres of lava, which is what the oceanic crust is made out of, it's basalt, if 100 metres of lava flowed for 100 years, we would have something like 360, 3,650 kilometres of oceanic crust, which is about 66% of the Atlantic Ocean spread as it is today. So where did all the extra mass come from? Well I can only assume that prior to the flood the earth had a core temperature nothing like today. It was somewhere between 1 degrees and 99 degrees Celsius so the temperature of water um, and in, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 17, God says, I, behold, I do bring a flood upon the earth. So it's evident that the flood was a supernatural event. It had supernatural triggers. It was initiated supernaturally by God. So if the earth's core temperature wasn't as it is today, if it was cooler, and God increased the mass of the earth. God increased the energy of the earth. And therefore, the expansion of the earth is a decompression of the earth. So, expanding earth, the continental crust boundaries meet together on a smaller shell, on an interlocking shell. <clears throat> James Maxlow has done 23 reconstructions uh, of expanding Earth. Um, I have done a two-stage reconstruction, 100% um, and a 75% uh, pro rata. And I was able to convince myself that the Earth has expanded based on the geometric evidence. So once again... Uh, it, is a, it is a physical impossibility that the earth is expanding, yet the boundaries meet together and prove that it has. And I propose to you that expanding earth <coughs> was instigated by the global flood. Thanks for listening.